Hello, everyone. This is JPL, and today I'm joined with... Matthew here. Yes, and we are a podcast named in brackets. Hello, Matthew. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I- I'm doing good. Um, yeah, today we're going to talk about some movie stuff, specifically movie theater experiences that we've had. Uh, do you like going to the movies, Matthew? Oh, yeah. I, I love going to the theater, and... Yeah, it's it's great. Changes how you see a movie a lot of times. It does. It's also it can be much better if you get to experience it with friends. Um, but yeah, so today, you know, we're gonna share our top five best and worst movie experiences. So we have ten actually, but it, it's gonna be a little bit of a weird order. Instead of just doing five first of the worst and then five of the best we're gonna go back and forth with number five of the worst then number five of the best um it's gonna get confusing um but hopefully we can get there yeah we're we're gonna try and not get out of order here right and so of course let's like start talking about some stuff we're gonna start with our worst movie experiences uh, so number five, let's go. Yeah. Um, so my number five worst movie theater experience is it's low on my list because it's a movie I actually like and I actually loved seeing it in the theater. Um, um but I, I, I guess we should also point out that like worst and best doesn't necessarily mean that the film itself is either great or bad. Yes. It just means the experience itself was not great. Yes. In, in fact, I think all of my worst movie theater experiences, I liked the movies. The experience of it being in the theater was the issue. Right. Uh, it, and that that kind of segues perfectly into my number five pick for worst, which is the movie A Hidden Life. Um, and this is a 2019 movie directed by Terrence Malick, who's known for very slow paced and sort of movies that you get wrapped up in the emotions of and they take their time and a hidden life is three hours long it feels about three weeks long when you're sitting in the theater watching Aww. it there there's a sequence of events um where this guy he gets he's a um a farmer living in i believe austria during the time of world war ii and he gets told he has to go join the German army. And he says, no, I'm not going. I don't agree with the Nazi party. And as a result, he gets thrown in prison. So it's sort of his story. And then also the story of his wife, who's back on the farm and kind of experiencing the social ramifications of her husband's decision. Um, and about halfway through the movie, There's this prison sequence where it's kind of like a montage, you know, normally it's what a movie would do to say, you know, a lot of time is passing here. And it felt like, okay, yeah, we're going to feels like we're getting towards the end of the war. And then the date comes up at the end and you're like, oh, one month has passed since the beginning of this montage. And it, it just takes forever for things to happen. Um. And you get uncomfortable in the seat of the theater and you're like, when is this going to (laughs) end? But at the same time, um, it's such a good movie and it's a movie that makes you think a lot. And there's a lot of space to think about, sort of wrestle with, did this guy make the right decision? Because, I mean, it's morally the correct decision, but then also it's making his life so much more difficult and it's making the life of his wife so much more difficult and his family. Um. So so it really lets you sit with those things. And I'm glad I saw it in the theater because it's not one of those that you just can throw on and watch in your living room. Um, it's easy to sort of want to look at your phone or want to get up and do something else for a little bit. So sitting with it for the three hours um, is valuable, but it's also a little bit, it, it tries your patience. Yeah. No, 
Um, I, I don't. I've not seen a whole lot of films that are that long in theaters. Um, the only ones that I can recall would be the, most recently the Batman. Um, and then uh, of course Endgame. But anything else before that, I, I don't recall. But yeah, long movies, even when you're just sitting at home, can be painful to watch. I, I know that when I first watched the Godfather films, I couldn't watch the whole movie at once because like, it was so long, of course. And of course, at that time, storytelling was a bit slower paced. So it took its time to get to its uh, climax and conclusion. And all the exciting stuff. So um, for each of the films, I, I paused halfway through and then continue it the next day. Which, of course, is not the way that the film's intended to go. But it was just how I did it. Because it was long and not yeah. <laughs> easily to manage. I, I can't imagine just going through and watching older films like Lawrence of Arabia or Cleopatra. Those four-hour films, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how I'd be able to do that if everyone did that. But yeah, yeah. And a hidden life is even slower paced than those movies. Um, it, it takes maybe a solid thirty minutes before much of importance happens. It's basically just shots of people farming. <laughs> but uh, again, it's like it's a movie that wants you to sit with it and think about it. Um, yeah, it, it it was an, a tough experience to sit through, but I'm glad I did. Right. Um, so then moving on to my number five worst, um, which is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, the film itself, I, I think it's fine. I, I, I don't think the film was really a problem that I had in theaters. I enjoyed it. I... I believe I watched it with a friend. Um, yeah, one of our friends. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember our old, our Bible teacher back in high school? Yeah. Yeah, I believe like he and I would watch some films from time to time. I believe that was one of the films um, that we watched together. And he said like, "Oh, I didn't know Drax was such a funny character." Um, but for this film for specifically, the reason why I have it being one of my worst movie theater experiences, it, it's not about the film itself, but it was more so about the audience I was with. Um, so, like, the row, I, I was either at the row next to me or the row behind me, um, you have those really noisy <laughs> uh, members who are, I don't know what to describe them, disruptive little. Uh, and it was such it was just such like a weird time because like they would talk out loud and they would comment about things that were going on. Um, but, but most importantly, my goodness, they, they were profane. They, they swore a lot. But like it wasn't the type of a thing where like they were reacting to what was going on the screen. They were swearing it. To make it sound cool. You know how people would do that. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, I want to sound cool. And so it's them like, the entire time, they're like saying all the uh, curse words that you could probably, he you could possibly hear. And they're saying it in a way that makes it sound cool. So they're like, if yeah, bull, mm. you know, stuff like that. And like, whenever the film in the film when characters would start to say an F word like son of a or oh, this is bull some uh they would like out loud finish the sentence it's like ah booge uh and so really i was distracted by all of that and their comments and stuff it was like yeah, i believe they were on the phone as well a couple times it, it was just I, I couldn't focus on the film and i just enjoyed being there less because of their silliness. Yeah, I, I've been to several movies where people are talking the whole time. Um, and it, it ruins the experience if you're 
if you're trying to pay attention. Yeah. Um, you have any uh, similar story to like this before? Yeah, I, I don't know if I recall a specific time. Um, okay. I, I recently went to see Top Gun. Um, it was the second time I'd seen it in the theater. And there were a few people near me who were talking the whole time. But then about 20 minutes into the movie, they got up and took a different seat where I couldn't hear them anymore. Okay. I, I think the, the most similar story I have to that was when I saw Avengers Infinity War and a few rows in front of me, there was a, it was a little kid's birthday party. Oh. But the little kid was the only kid in this group. So it was all of his, his parents, his grandparents, aunts and uncles. And it was obviously that none of the adults wanted to be there. Um, but this little kid, he's so excited. He's dressed up as a Spider-Man. And spoilers for the movie, Spider-Man dies in it. Um, so as everyone's leaving the theater, I'm listening into this birthday party. And the grandpa turns to the little kid who's dressed up as Spider-Man and says to him, well, guess Spider-Man's dead now. <laughs> and then they walked out of the theater. <laughs> oh. I mean, we, we know that older grandparents can have that kind of response. Yep. Uh uh, that was more humorous than your story, and it was yeah. after the movie had finished, so it wasn't right. ruining well, you, the experience. You told me that before. It, it's still funny. <laughs> still funny. This poor kid. Um, so then let's move on to our number five best movie theater experience. Yeah. Um, so it, it's good that we've been talking about audiences because I have all of my top five best movie theater experiences are in part because of the audience I saw it with. Um, okay. Number five, probably most of all. And that was, I saw Knives Out. Um, it was, I believe, the second time I'd seen it. And we were showing it on the campus of the university I went to. And Knives Out is like this. It's a really good, entertaining comedy murder mystery with a lot of really good laugh lines. Um and seeing it, it was an audience of maybe 200 people in this auditorium. And every joke got a laugh. Um, there were moments where people gasped out loud. And it was just like such a fun environment. And I think my favorite moment is near the end of the movie, one of the main characters of the movie pukes on the the villain. Um, I won't. I'll try not to spoil who it is. And people clapped and cheered. Um, it, it was just such a great experience. And everyone laughing along with the movie and having a great time. Uh, yeah. Um, seeing a film in a college town, usually you have kind of the best theater experience. Because they're young, our age, and they're reactive as well. So, like, if you see most of the Marvel films uh, in a college town, when the college students are there, if it's packed, you usually you'll get a great experience or two, which is fun. Yeah, and this was actually on the college campus, so it was pretty much only college students. And yeah, there were like two hundred of us in this room, um, and two hundred people laughing at a joke together is a lot of fun. It is. You can't help but laugh when a whole group starts laughing. So, yeah. Moving on to my number five. Uh, this is this is the youngest that I have on this list for me. Uh, so this is Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith, and part of it is because this was my first Star Wars movie that I saw in the theaters. Um, I was maybe seven. I hadn't seen a Star Wars film. I had friends who talked about Star Wars, but I was didn't really know what it was. So we went to this went to the theater and um cool look well a cool thing is to the kids who came um to the opening thing they were given these cool action figures um for free which was cool but like the the figures were just 
the bargain bin ones that you know the lames <laughs> one <laughs> like like the, you, you go to walmart right now or target and you look at the star wars toy sections the ones that are left over so uh grief carga from mandalorian that's all you see in the <laughs> stores right now <laughs> and so the figure that i got was that one pilot guy from the phantom menace <laughs> Uh, the yeah, and that when they're escaping, he's just narrating like, "Oh, the hyperdrive is linking." This stuff, I uh, I don't remember his name. It's not really important, but that was my first Star Wars action figure. No, no weapons or anything. Just this lame <laughs> pilot dude. But I'm so excited to get the toy anyway. But yeah. anyway, it, just seeing this film for the first time was just mind-blowing i had never seen action scenes that are bright that are cool looking um you have all the battles you have all these lightsabers sound effects like it was just all over the place and i was like holy crap this is what is thing and i was so excited i really liked it i got home i started drawing the scenes that I can remember from the films, I could very distinctly remember. It's like, ah, Anakin's ship is yellow. Get my color uh, crown and start drawing that. And it's just like, it, it sparks the imagination. It's always great to watch a film that really sparks something in you. And this was one of the films that did. And um, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it for doing it. Yeah, I, I miss this one in theaters. I was a bit too young, probably. But, yeah, it, it seems like people who went had a great time at it. Mm -hmm. Especially for kids. Yeah, yeah. And watching uh, Order 66. <laughs> for your first Star Wars movie. I don't remember yeah. that, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So number four of our worst experience. Yeah, so I have that number four. This is another movie that I like, um, but had a bad experience with in the theater. Um, and it's the 2017 movie The Square. Um, this was a Palme d'Or winner. It was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the Oscars. And it, it's, I went in, I had seen the trailer, and I showed the trailer to my friends, and I'm like, hey, we should go and see this. And this was second semester of my freshman year, so, you know, I knew my friends, but we were still kind of, like, getting to know each other. Um, and we weren't quite as good friends back then as we are now. Um, but I thought, you know, this is a... Palm d'Or winner, so it has to be pretty good. And it also looked like a fun sort of satirical comedy. And I didn't look into it anymore because I didn't want spoilers, but I figured, oh yeah, it'll probably be a good hour and a half. We can go out to dinner afterwards and kind of just have a bit of fun at the theater. And so we sit down in the theater. First off, empty. Oh. There's me, my four friends, and no one else in the theater. Um, which, which was fine. Um, and as the movie started and there's a lot of like great jokes and we're having a great time, we're laughing our heads off. It's so great. And then there's a scene about halfway through the movie that is very awkward in a way that the rest of the movie isn't quite so awkward and the tension in the room just built and built and built. And I was sitting in my seat going, Oh no, what did I get us all into? And, yeah, after that point, for the rest of the movie, there's, like, this tension in the air of, like, oh, no, did I, what What have I convinced my friends to go with me to see? Um, and, and there were a few funny moments, but a lot of it was, like, us awkwardly laughing at stuff. Um, <laughs> and it gets, it gets a little bit intense. There are some scenes that you go, oh, that, that was, that, this is very, like, dark. Um, and also the movie is not in a 90 minute comedy. Like I thought it is two and a half hours long. So I had convinced my friends that we were going to 
an hour and a half long comedy to have a nice evening and then go out for dinner. Instead, I brought them to a two and a half hour long dark, awkward comedy where we were the only ones in the theater. Ne- Did needless you go to, to say, dinner afterwards? We, we went to McDonald's afterwards and looked up articles to figure out what the movie was about. And then we all went our separate ways. What year did this come out? Th- this was 2017, but we saw it in early 2018. Okay. So, yeah, after that, after that, my my friends were not all that happy with me for choosing it. And <laughs> now, now I preface before certain movies that we go and see. I haven't looked anything up. It's probably going to be weird. You don't have to come with me. Um, and... and Sometimes they come along, sometimes they don't. Honestly, that sounds like most films that we've watched together that you <laughs> introduced us to. Yeah, yeah, probably. Like, even when you invited us to your house to show <laughs> us films. Like, that that's how I feel. Even when you recommend a show, and I watch it thinking, ah, oh, it's good. He thinks it's good. It's like, what the heck is this? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah, I, I've tried to get better at recommending and showing people things that I think they will like. But this was one where, if I had known going in, I wouldn't have recommended that my friends go and see it with me. Yeah, and of course, an empty theater isn't always um, the best experience to have. Um, yeah, I, I remember specifically when the My Little Pony came out. Uh, I went and saw it in theaters, but like, of course, how many people do you think are going to see the film in theaters? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it came out the same time as Blade Runner 2099. So <laughs> you have a theater with like a couple little girls here and there. Just me, that one and the dog guy. It's like, <laughs> it's kind of awkward. Yeah, uh, it's also like, oh, there's not that many people here. Not that many people are laughing at the jokes and stuff. It's a, it's really awkward. It's like, hmm, I hope nobody's looking at me weird, thinking yeah. I'm creep. So yeah, um, empty theaters. Not that great. But they can at times. Be, yeah, it really depends on the movie. It, it really depends. It also really depends if this is your first or second time viewing. Yeah. Um, I think second or third time. MD Theater works out. I know that we did that with Rogue One when we saw that, but um, yeah, first time viewing it was kind of awkward. <laughs> yep. All right, moving on to my number four. My number four is Alien Covenant. Um, <laughs> okay, um, this is. Probably the only example I have for this one where... No, never mind. There's another one. But um, where I was so excited for this film. You know, going up to it, you and I were chatting, like, uh, talking about how excited we were to see this film. You know, we had booked our tickets. Um, I know that they were showing the original Alien film uh, in the theater, and we had plans to go and see that, but we ended up canceling that. Um but I, I watched all the films, uh, even the Predator films, you know, to get myself excited to come see this film. And then I come and see the film, and then I just, I leave the theater just so bummed out and disappointed in this film. I know that you enjoy this film more than I do, but I was just so disappointed in it. Um, there's not a whole lot of films that I would say that I saw in theater that I was just so bummed out by the end of it. Um, as this film, so it's forever in my mind of just like, oh man, this film could have been something more than <laughs> what I hoped it to be, but it was fine for you, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a blast with this one. Um, I actually, I, I remember really loving it when I saw it in the theater and being on like sort of the the right wavelength part because it's a very odd movie um but i had a blast and then recently i was thinking because it's not a well-respected movie so i 
was like, hey, maybe I should rewatch this and see if it actually is as good as I thought it was at the time. And I watched that and Prometheus and the first two Alien movies. And I was like, oh, yeah, Alien Covenant is actually it, it's a movie I would stand up for. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I recognize I'm in the minority with that opinion. Of course. Um, but yeah, no, this film. I was really excited about the music in this film. Um, that's one thing I do remember. Yeah. Just being in the theater and they start playing the music from the original movie. And I was just like so happy to hear that. I, I really love hearing classical themes in the theaters. It, it's it's different experience and just yeah. watching it on your TV or on your computer. It's I don't know, it's magical. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's I, I think it's a fun movie but i i recognize that that is not what everyone thinks all right so now we're moving on to our number four of the best experience yeah um so mine is one th- this is one i'm kind of cheating because this is actually two experiences for the price of one like yeah that's fine. That is, that's fine that's fine yeah true. but it's mission impossible fallout um I saw it twice. The first time I saw it in an actual movie theater and the second time I saw it at a screening on my college campus. And both times were very different experiences, but I had a ton of fun with them. Um, In the theater the first time, this is a really well, like, perfectly orchestrated type of action movie where, like, the tension builds perfectly and exactly and everything's like timed and the edits are all in the perfect spots and watching that in the movie theater for the first time and I was with my sisters and my grandparents and this was my one of the first PG-13 movies that I had brought my sister to especially to be like this action movie we're all like at the edge of our seats um I remember the climax was intense and like you don't know what's going to happen next and you're clutching the armrests and yeah, it it was just a a great time. And then the release of when everything works out in the end and you're like, Oh, phew. And you take a deep breath. Um, and, and it was so much fun being in the theater and like having that experience of seeing it on the big screen with the sound. And then I rewatched it on campus and I got to see, I got to watch how the audience reacted to it. Um, Specifically, there was someone in front of me who reacted very loudly to a lot of things. She would laugh at all of the jokes, and then she would gasp or scream whatever things got tense. Um, And and so I got to relive my experience of the movie through this person in front of me who was having a blast, just kind of getting involved in the world of the film and getting you know like screaming when tom cruise crashes off his motorcycle or gasping when someone starts to fall and yeah it it was great oh yeah that does sound like a great time um i have not had that type of experience with mission impossible i've i've not actually seen the films in theaters so I can't share that. But, like, in films going on later in my list here, I will say those are just similar stories that I've had um, with that. So, Yeah, there, there's a new Mission Impossible coming out soon. And I'd actually say um, the new Top Gun movie as well does a very good job sort of being that kind of experience where you're on the edge of your seat and having a great time. All right. So moving on to my number four. My number four is the most different of probably on this list because it's not really talking about one theater experience. Um, this one is going over the year of 2014, um, where there was a lot of good films that came out that year, and um, it was really you you and I and I've just a bunch of friends we just went to the theaters a lot together that year um like every week every month you'd be like hey 
let's go watch this film and this film. Because, like, we had films like uh, Ad X-Men, Days of Future Past, The Maze Runner, Godzilla, Interstellar, uh, and so forth. And just, it's really fun to watch a movie with your friends. Um, it was probably one of my favorite times, like, when we were able to do that. Um, Maze Runner is one that, like, is in my heart because I didn't really know the books. But having friends who knew the books were, like, really excited about this film and just talking about it afterwards. And just the afterwards, how we're just waiting outside, waiting for one of our parents to pick us up in their car and just on, in the car, like, giving us rides home. Just, the year was just so much fun with the films. Like, Godzilla, I was just so excited for all the different cool moments. Um, Interstellar. My mind was blown just talking about all that experience. It was just a lot of exciting stuff that we just got to share and talk and interact with, which um, we didn't quite go to the movies quite as frequent as we did with that year, but that was, you know, one of my favorite memories, um, one of my favorite years as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that was, I mean... And we we had a system for it. We would kind of we had a group chat on Facebook to see who was even interested. And then I would go like the day before after school to buy tickets. And, you know, I would walk up to the to the window and say, I would like 10 tickets for Maze Runner. And the ticket person would look at me like 10 tickets. Are you sure that's going to be like. Oh, I don't even remember how much it would have been. That's going to be like $30. And I was like, yep, 10 tickets. And then we would all go together. We would have a great time. All sit in the same row together. But yeah, it was great. We we got to see a lot of good movies together that way. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, um, before you'd actually gone, like, you'd go up to us and like, hey, you got the money for the uh, theater ticket? <laughs> And like you had, you had this little uh, Ziploc bag with all the money that we'd give you. Um, yeah, it, it was a great time. Yeah, I, I mean, I I wasn't rolling around in cash, so I needed I needed the money before I could buy the tickets. I know, I know. It's it's still <laughs> what a great time. Yeah, yeah, I miss those days. Just going to the theater <laughs> a lot. Um, of course, we can't do that as much because theaters cost money. A lot yep. more money than they did for us. And, of course, we're not all together, so there's not that many experiences. So, I, yeah, that's one of my best experiences, just that entire year of our system of going, seeing the films, which did continue a bit in 2015. But I, I, I'm blanking about what came out that year, because 2014 we, was yeah. so much fun. Yeah, we, we saw movies after that together, but... 20, 2014 was kind of the peak of that. Yeah, we went a lot. Yep. <laughs> we went a lot. But it was great. It was great. Yeah. All right. Which means our number three of our worst experiences. Yeah, so... And you no- and I both sh- have shared this experience <laughs> for number three. Yeah. Um. So my number three worst experience, this was my second time seeing Logan, and it was on a special sale day where tickets were cheaper. So I asked my parents, hey, do you want to go to this? And we decided to go and see Logan in the D-Box seats because I think the tickets would have cost us $5. So we're like, hey, for $5, we can give this a try, see how it is. And Logan isn't the best movie for D-Box. Partially, it's just that I don't like the D-Box seats, turns out. This was my first time going, so I didn't know that in advance. But it, it was a bit ridiculous. So, <laughs> for example, every time someone opens a door, the seat will try to fling you out. And then yeah. every time someone, you know, spills a coffee cup, seat tries to fling you out. Um, so there, And then action scenes, you know, for some reason, the seat's moving as Wolverine is moving his hands so you're just getting flung around um and then just a lot of scenes were like heavy action you know it's a nice massage yeah. in the chair <laughs> um just the parallels were just crazy because i saw this with my mom as well yeah on that day i don't know if we were in the same theater or not 
I don't believe we were. Anyway, but yeah, I, I saw it there. It was... I think it's the last D-Box experience I've had. <laughs> ever. It was my second. My first one was, was with uh, Journey 2. Okay. From, that was just terrible because my seat didn't work. <laughs> well, so, probably a better experience in the end. It was, but we paid money for that seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Logan was just so crazy. Just, you know... Opening and closing the door. Earthquake! Ah! <laughs> Epic fight scenes. Nice massage. Like, oh, my back. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, it, it was just so funny. Uh, just how out of sync everything was. It just didn't work out. But Yeah. Um, I mean, and there were scenes that were nice. Like, in the car, the seat would kind of rumble and you would feel like you're sitting in the car. Or um, yeah. when Professor X has his seizures, it's like sending out these psychic waves. So the seed is kind of shaking in sync with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually, I recently went back to D-Box. I saw the new Top Gun in D-Box. And it had similar moments of the door opens and your seat flings you out. Um, but then the dogfight scenes were also fun. Because you're moving with the planes. And yeah, so it can, it can work. Um but Logan was not one of the movies that it worked well for. It was not. And that was the only time I saw that film in theaters as well. Oh. So <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it, we were in for a ride, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, Logan. Yeah. It, oh no, what... he's getting to a car. No. Um, <laughs> good times. It, it, good times. It's one of those things that works a lot better in an amusement park where the movie is 30 minutes long and it's tailor-made for the experience. It doesn't work quite as well when you're watching a just a random superhero movie for two hours. Mm -hmm. All right. So for my number three. My number three is the movie Underdog. Uh, <laughs> so what year did this film come out? 2007, 2009, 2008... 2007. Yeah. So there was this period in my childhood where we would go to the film, go to the movies like every week um, because they would have a special day where tickets were cheaper. And so my mom and my sister, like right after school ended, she just took us to the movies and we'd watch a movie. But there was this large chunk of time where there wasn't anything for me to see <laughs> in the theaters. So while they were going and watching some PG-13 film or something rated R, they used to be like, oh, this film's kind of a bit too much. Anyway, we'll just put little, little John in Underdog. <laughs> <laughs> and so I saw this film in Spanish, by the way. I had no idea what they were talking about, but <laughs> I, it was funny, I guess. I saw this film in theaters nine times. <laughs> nine times. It's the longest <laughs> I've seen a film in theaters. The most I've seen a film in theaters. <laughs> and it's Underdog. I have not watched that film since because I've seen it so much. <laughs> I want to rewatch that movie. But I don't, because I saw it so many times. <laughs> it's, it's. Have you ever had like an experience like that where they just put you in something? I yeah, I, not that I can recall, but I, I've definitely. There's been movies where I've seen it more times than I want to for reasons out of my control. <laughs> right, but yeah, Underdog Man, that's one of my favorite stories about going to the theaters. Just. Seeing this <laughs> darn dog movie nine times. <laughs> and that's yeah, not I, an exaggeration. I count it. <laughs> it's like, oh, what what am I going to watch this week? Um, Underdog? Oh, Again. <laughs> okay. Might as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it got to the point where, like, after each time, there was less and less people in the theater. <laughs> and so, like, the last time I saw it, I was the only kid in the theater. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That, that's... I was like eight or nine at that time. 
I was older. Yeah, but I've like only seen nine it. times in a theater in Spanish. <laughs> Man, that was a time. Yeah, I, I've only seen it once and not in a theater, and I don't even remember it, so I can't imagine how. It, it's it's not a movie that is remembered particularly fondly, I don't think, so I can't no. imagine it that many well, times. I, I can tell you the plot by memory. <laughs> even today, I know <laughs> almost everything that happens in this film. Oh, it's yeah, man. That's a curse to have upon <laughs> you. <laughs> you will be cursed to only remember one film on your deathbed. <laughs> it will be underdog. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Our number three of our best experience. Yeah. Um. My my top three. I've kind of been going back and forth on which I want um to be my number one. But I, I decided to go with, actually, I'm going to switch them last minute here. So for my number three, I'm going to go with Parasite, um, which I, I had a similar experience to Mission Impossible Fallout with Parasite as well, where I first saw it in the theater, um, paid for my ticket and everything, and then I saw it a few more times, and then eventually we showed it on my university campus. Um, so I got I got to see it in multiple different contexts. Um, but the the first time I'm sitting in the theater, and this was when I go and see a movie, um, I'm often kind of thinking of, you know, where where is this going to land in my top of the year? How is this going to measure up to things and i'm like oh yeah parasite this movie i've heard good things about it and i like the director a lot i i think this will be my number two movie of the year and then i remember thinking halfway through in fact i could point to the exact scene where it's just like i, I was just like okay no this is my number one movie of the year and maybe one of my favorites ever um because it's just it's a rush of such good filmmaking and so compelling and it's funny and then it's scary and it's thrilling and exciting and yeah it, it's just ridiculously good um so i i remember walking out of the theater just incredibly happy i had gone in with the highest expectations this was a palm d'Or winner it was getting rave reviews everywhere the trailer was incredible and i walked out liking it even more than my expectations. Um, and then a few months later, this was after it had won Best Picture at the Oscars, we showed it on my university campus. And since a lot of people had heard about it, it was super popular. So we had maybe 300 people in this auditorium. And most of the people there, maybe they'd seen a trailer, maybe they'd only heard about it. It was kind of seen as an important movie, you know, it won Best Picture, so you kind of have to go and see it eventually. Um, and it starts out as a comedy, and people weren't expecting that, so it took a while. But eventually the jokes started landing, people started laughing, getting in the swing of things. Um, there, There's a scene where one of the main characters is tutoring another character um, who's a few years younger than him, and... They start to have this romantic dialogue and people are yelling at the screen, no, no, don't do it, um, which was hilarious. So then as the movie goes on, it shifts into being more of a thriller. So people stopped laughing and they started like gasping. And there are moments where people were like the entire theater was screaming in terror at this movie. Um, it, it was so much fun being in that room and getting to hear everyone's reactions and the gasps of shock as the plot twist is revealed and the the surprise and the screams and the one of the last scenes there's this sort of shocking moment of violence and you couldn't tell the screams on in the movie from the screams of the audience it was so immersive to be in that <laughs> I still haven't seen this film, so I 
<laughs> don't know the experience of that. But yeah, no, that would be an exciting time. Yeah. It's a, it's a similar story to your Mission Impossible one, I assume. Yes, it's I, I would say it was even better though than the Mission Impossible one because it, it's such a good movie that you just have such a great time. And especially to see it with an audience who wasn't you know, they went in expecting, oh, it's the best picture winner. It's probably some like stuffy drama with a lot of artistic stuff that you could appreciate but then having them go in and actually enjoy and be entertained yeah, yeah it, it was great uh so moving on to my number three my uh, third best experience was when i saw return of the cape crusaders this is a batman film animated film came out in 2016 um, which brought back the 60s Adam West and Burt Ward, Batman and Robin, for this animated feature. Um, and uh, they they had like a little bit of a limited showing in theaters. Sometimes the animated movies would do that. But yeah, I saw this film with my mom. Um, we had both grown up just watching the 60s cartoon. I believe that was one of my exposures to Batman was through that show. I had seen the entire show growing up with it, loving each episode, just loving all the characters. And so when we saw this, it was just a really fun because like the film had like the original actors, but the film was just a love letter to the 60s show. It had all these funny references, um, all these funny jokes and dialogues that were just humor of the time, just the little campiness that they had. It was great to watch. Um, Especially with me and my mom just both growing up with something like this and just having this fun experience together. And also just having it be in a room of, like, DC fans who um, enjoy it and grew up with that stuff as well was great. It was just a good time. Yeah, that, that uh, comedies are fun to see with an audience who's invested in it. Yeah. All right. Number two worst. Okay, so my second worst experience is actually a really recent one. Um, just a few weeks ago, actually. Um, but it, it's kind of made its way. It's justified its position on this list. Um, I, I think the least enjoyable movie theater experiences are when you're uncomfortable. And this was a movie that is intentionally makes you uncomfortable but for me it was maybe a bit too much um and it's crimes of the future this is the latest david cronenberg movie who's kind of known for his movies that make you uncomfortable um and this is one about a future world where humans no longer feel pain and surgery has become sort of this art form that people participate in um so as as you can imagine the movie has quite a few scenes of body horror of people performing these surgeries and it, it gets intense um the, this was my first david cronenberg movie and my first body horror movie in the theater um and even though as as i get more distance from it i think it's a very good movie but being it stuck in a dark room for that where you don't really have anywhere to go. I just remember feeling sick to my stomach for a long part of the runtime. Um, mm. Sort of feeling, feeling psychologically uncomfortable being in the theater. And I, I did not have a good time watching it to the extent where I almost regret seeing it in the theater because I think I would have had a better experience if I had seen it at home where I can modulate things better um, where there isn't someone eating a huge bucket of popcorn right in front of me as they're showing a surgery on the screen. That that's <laughs> a bit. I was like, he he walked into the theater with his bucket of popcorn, and I'm like, how are you doing this? That'd probably be me. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was it was intense, and it, it's also like everything in that movie, the production design, everything so dingy and dirty and. The soundtrack just kind of gets under your skin and there's no 
like breathing room from it. There's no moment where you're like, okay, I can take a breath, collect my thoughts, and then like get ready myself for the next part. No, it's just go, go, go. Um, so yeah, if you're not having a good time at the start of it, it, it just keeps piling things on. And eventually I got to the point where I was numb to it. And then I started enjoying the movie a bit more. And then as I've thought about it, I'm like, oh, this has some interesting themes it's exploring. Um, but I did not enjoy seeing it. Yeah, for me, I guess a similar film would be War of the Worlds. Um, okay. Like if, yeah, because I, I saw this as a kid. Yeah. And so as a kid, this film traumatized the heck out of me. Like, uh, especially scary films at the time. The Village, the M. Light Shyamalan film, The Village was yeah. also one where I was just uncomfortable the entire time because I was uh, scared of the situation that was going on and just gives you nightmares afterwards for years on. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, and I I like seeing horror movies in the theater. And I've seen some quite intense ones, but I don't know. Something about this movie just got on my nerves and made the experience a difficult one. All right. All right. So my number two for worst experience would be Solo, A Star Wars Story. Um, this is one of those examples where, you know, you, you have a film that's, you know, decent and all right. Um, but you have a crowded audience. You know, so, so you're expecting, like, ah, oh, this should be fun and energetic. But not a not a peep comes out of anyone. Oh. No one's excited. No one's giving any emotion. And it's just so dead in the theater. Um, that's not a fun way to watch a movie. Um, especially when you have an entire audience, because everyone feels dead. Um, you just feel underwhelmed. Um, Solo, I think, is a film that I've enjoyed the more I look back at it. But, like, at that time, it was just the most underwhelming film, partially because no one in the audience cared about the stuff that happened. No one cheered. No one did anything. It was a sim- it's, it's kind of a similar experience with The Rise of Skywalker, where no one did anything. Um, but that movie had moments where I actually appreciated versus Solo. At that time, I didn't really think much about it, except for that big plot twist at the end of the film. Um, so yeah, it's never fun to have a film where you don't have that type of emotion going on with the audience members. The Batman is probably the closest I've had since then, but the fat Batman is a film that's kind of made that way. While the Star Wars films are made to be enjoyed and cheered by the audience, but there was none of that. So it was kind of awkward. And it's also how like, this was the first day of the film where your oh. audience is typically excited. So having that was just, just shocking. And just so, I don't know. It's it's such a weird experience to have. So yeah. Yeah, that that's I, I had better audiences for both Solo and Rise of Skywalker. But when I saw the most recent Spider Man movie, Spider Man No Way Home, I had an audience that did not laugh at any of the jokes, um, or any of the cheerworthy moments. And that movie is paced and designed like the editing mm-hmm, yeah. is in such a way that it's made so people have time to cheer so see that it just like you know a huge character walks onto the screen and it's just crickets in the audience and i i think i would probably would have enjoyed that movie more if i had been in a better audience and also we had not Known about everything that happened beforehand as well. Yes, that that too. Um, yeah. But I I guess to just um to compliment Solo and how Solo was bad and no one reacted, I guess we should also give the duality 
where where everyone reacts and it's a great time. And we both had kind we both had the same one. There are yeah. two, which is Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Yeah, the, this was. Um, I think we were even at the same screening though, in different parts of the room. Uh yeah, we both saw the same one. Yeah, um, and, but you you had a different story with yours as well. Yeah. Um. So, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. The it was like such a huge deal at the time. Most anticipated remember, film of all time. Yeah. Like Ten years, uh, since the last film. Yeah, and things new, were like, new movie. With original cast. Yeah. And, and things were crazy. Like, we bought our theater tickets three months in advance. Yeah, we did. Um, and we didn't even get, like, perfect seats. The Most of the good seats were already taken by the time three months in advance. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually had... We were going on vacation um, for Christmas that year. And we had our Star Wars tickets before we had our plane tickets. Um, so they were actually the same night. So we left from the theater to go to the airport. Um, but but it was it was insane being in that room and the lights dim and the logos start appearing and the music starts playing. And then everyone starts cheering. Yeah, it, like, it was. I start crying. Yeah. Like it's it's an experience that like that's why Star Wars is important because it makes people feel these things. Yeah. Um and so th- it was just an exciting time. I believe this was also we also saw this in 3D, didn't we? I believe so, yeah, which I mean it's not one of those movies that you need 3D for it to work, but it it's it was it's like one of the only times that they had tickets left. That was yeah. in English for like an approximate time, and so yeah. that was all we had. Um, I saw this with my mom, of course. So it was, yeah, it was exciting. Just back back when there wasn't all this controversy and toxicity, yeah, um, that we have today, where everyone was just excited. Like this was yeah. one of the best times. Followed by. My number two, I also added Rogue One because we both we both saw this together, yep. and we both loved it. I believe yep. we, we we did three. We both saw it three times. I saw it three times. You saw it how many times? I saw it three times opening weekend. Not mm. not planning to, but that that's how things worked out for me. Yeah. But in total, how many times would you say? You saw oh, it? in total, I saw it. I believe five times in theaters. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. Yeah, like another good time where everyone was cheering. This time it's the original trilogy timeline. And so all this cool stuff happening. Um, I believe we also saw in a group. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we had Toa, we had uh, Speedy all together. Yeah, that, that then, was one of the later times we saw it. Yeah. Was, was it? I thought it was our first time seeing it. I I saw it so I I had a an odd because I had night I had tickets for the Friday showing the Friday night showing, mm-hmm. um. But then the night before, my dad and I just spur of the moment decided, hey, let's go and see the nine p.m. showing, like the first screening. And so that was my first time seeing it. Oh, okay. And okay. then I had tickets to go with my family the next day. Um, and then after that showing, I met up with one of my teachers who said, hey, I'm going with the rest of my family tomorrow morning. Do you want to come along? So I said, <laughs> yeah. So went home, went to bed, woke up, went back to the theater to see it a third time. Yeah. And we saw, I believe we saw opening weekend. Yeah. As a group, because like we saw it together, and then we went to your house and watched A New Hope. Yeah, right I, I don't remember if that was opening weekend or if that was the second a viewing? few weeks later. Because uh, then we did the podcast as well. Yeah. Soon after that, so that was a long time ago. Yeah. But like again, 
fun with your friends and just in an audience that actually is there and reacting to all the moments is great and crazy and like we're all happy we're all great to be there so yeah yeah and rogue one is one of those movies where and i would argue the first two acts of it aren't incredible but then the third act is just like this big long action sequence with a ton of exciting things happening and yeah it really builds up to a really great climax and a sort of emotional moment for these characters and then you also have the the sort of the final stinger at the end is this darth vader sequence that sort of blew everyone away yeah it did and good times good times yeah uh, let's ruin uh, it by talking about our worst times <laughs> yeah so my number one worst time um I said that the worst movie theater experiences are when you are uncomfortable. And my number two experience was one where I was psychologically uncomfortable. My number one experience was when I was physically uncomfortable. Mm. Um, This was the first movie that my campus showed after all of the COVID lockdowns and everything. Um, So we had just come back from the summer and we're like the people who are choosing the movies on campus are like, Hey, let's show something. Um, so they rented this big screen for outdoors and got everyone together. And we're like, Hey, we're going to show this outdoors. You can bring lawn chairs or sleeping bags or whatever, and sit on the, in the grass. And then we'll show the movie and hopefully it'll be safer that way. Um, and it, it was a great idea. And this is in September, so you think, oh, yeah, the weather should be pretty pleasant for this. The problem was, this was Mm -hmm. an unusually cold day in September. Oh. And it was, I think it got below freezing. And the movie we're watching is the movie Waves, um, a 2019 movie, which is really good. But it's one of those movies that kind of like intentionally gets under your skin. So you're shivering in the cold. Everyone's huddled together. Um, Everyone's just like so cold. And we're watching this movie. And the movie is like sad and dark. And it it was and it's two hours and 15 minutes. So you're just like, when is this going to be over? And everyone's freezing cold. And yeah, it, it was it was not a not a pleasant experience um and then at the end i was part of the group who helped pack everything away so we're like pulling down this screen and the metal of it is below freezing so like your hands are sticking to it and yeah it it was not a fun experience even though it's a very good movie it we that was i believe I believe we maybe did one more outside movie screening, but that that was it. After that, people were like, "Nope, we're not, we're not gonna try this again." So we waited yeah. up to do stuff indoors. Yeah, I don't typically ever watch movies outside. Um, I think it's it's a rare, it's a very rare time. If I did, if I did, it was years ago. Yeah, I can't remember if I did. But like I can just imagine, just especially if it's like dark out, bugs coming in, poking <laughs> at you, the wind's blowing, um, food gets everywhere or something. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't sound like a. It seems like a great idea at first, but then just like all the little details, it's like ah. And, and this would have been if the weather had been nice. I think it would have been a pleasant experience. Just so Maybe. happened that this was an uncommonly cold night and yeah people were not happy walking away from that in fact i think a lot of people bailed um before the end yeah all right so my my worst movie theater experience was for kill bill volume one this film came out in 2003 i was maybe about five maybe (laughs) six um my mom and my sister you know, it's one of those days after school. They're just cheap tickets. 
they don't know what this film is about. They think it's like, oh, it's going to be some cool action thing. Maybe a romance. Um, I don't know why they thought that, but they, <laughs> I guess they thought that. And so we come in, and like immediately, we're, it's like someone gets shot in the head. Um, <laughs> then, you know, there's this whole fight scene with this two people, and one of them dies in front of a little kid, and then they cut to the hospital, and then all these dead bodies, and it's like, as soon as we got to all the dead bodies, we left the theater. <laughs> um, I, I just, I remember this film a lot, just for that. Um, <laughs> My my mother finally realized. Oh, I guess this film's a little bit much, and so, so we left. Um, I, I think maybe they put us into another film. They probably put me into Underdog. Uh, <laughs> they didn't because it didn't come out that time. Yeah, yeah. But, you you know, um, but yeah, that was that was a time. It's that's the only time I think I've ever bailed on a film. Because of Kill Bill, and it was like <laughs> more graphic than it was, and of course we didn't even get to the more graphic parts yeah. later on. But yeah, <laughs> that was a time, <laughs> yeah, of just questionable decisions. Um, which is the reason why you should look things up, parents, before you put your kids into the movie with you. <laughs> yep, it's especially like if it's rated R. Yeah, you should, you should know this. And <laughs> Kill Bill is on the on the high end of R, especially at the time. Yes. It, it actually was initially given an NC seventeen rating, which is why during the big battle at the end of the movie, it switches to black and white. And if you watch foreign cuts of the movie, there it's actually extended and in color. Yeah, and so. Um... I guess they just didn't check IDs back then. <laughs> I'm surprised I, mean, I even I, made it to the film. Yeah, it, it's it is actually legal for you to attend an R-rated movie if your parents are with you. Um, but it, it's it's not not necessarily advisable, especially for Kill Bill. If it was something like The King's Speech, I could see it, but yeah, but of course, like in the South America, nobody cares. Yep, yep. How about your age? They're like, ah, whatever. <laughs> He's five. Ah, go watch it. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it's time for our best experience. Yeah. Um. So, my best experience. Th- this is kind of a special one because it isn't just the movie. Um. It's one that I've actually seen twice in a theater setting, and both times it was great. And that is Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, This is kind of iconic. When it originally came out in the 1970s, huge box office bomb. But then people started to go and see it at midnight screenings, and they would yell things at the screen, and then eventually they would dress up in costumes then people would act out the movie um and then they would throw things at the screen and eventually it turned into this entire culture of people who will put on these performances and they will act out the movie in front of the movie and you can bring props and bring costumes and there are like specific moments where you call back to the screen um so yeah i i I got to go to a showing of this. This is the movie that my friends in college and I kind of, it's the movie where we all met each other. We watched it in a dorm basement and became friends after that. So when one of our mutual friends was going to be acting in one of the shadow casts of Rocky Horror, we all went to see it and it was just a blast. Um, It's a movie I'd seen a few times before then but going into the theater and it's the only time i've had rice in my shoe 
for for the duration of the movie. The only time I've had toilet paper thrown at my head in the movie theater. Um, and there's callbacks like um, one of the characters says he wants a phone and you yell castles don't have phones. It, it's it's just this like great time and then you also have the people in front of the screen acting it out and yeah it, it's so much fun and you see the movie in a completely different way it's a terrible way to watch the movie if you're trying to follow the plot because there's so many distractions but it, it's just so much fun everyone sings along to the songs they dads get up in their seats and yeah it, it was incredible um and then I got to see it again recently with a different shadow cast. And each shadow cast is different. Like there isn't a script people follow for the callbacks. Um, so you get, it's a different experience every time you go. <laughs> you talk about this film all the time, <laughs> specifically how people react to the film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, this, this is, I guess this is a similar to the room yeah it's a better movie to start out with than the room and it's more self-aware than the room right specifically the audience and how the audience just gets drunk throws spoons at stuff yeah um it's it's, i guess it's it's an experience to have i've not had that experience but it seems like a fun time yeah, it's it's. I would recommend. Um, it it can be a bit overwhelming, um, especially Rocky Horror Picture Show. I think of in course. particular, there's such a long culture of it, and it's it's a a sort of a movie that intentionally presses your buttons, and then to have people yelling at the screen, and it's but it, but it's it's a lot of fun. Um, I haven't seen any of the other sort of movies that have this reputation um in the theater room the room is is another one that that one i don't think has quite the same culture behind it rocky horror picture show people go because they appreciate it whereas the room people go to ridicule it um right but but it's a similar experience and then the other big one is more recently um people have been doing it with cats the 2019 movie um but i i would argue that one is also the movie itself is not quite as good as rocky horror picture show it maybe doesn't quite not quite as self-aware it could one day happen to the movie through the movie morbius yep that, that's <laughs> a, yeah and and those are decent comparisons for the type of movie that Rocky Horror Picture Show was seen as when it first came out. Right, right. Um, but but it's really as people have discovered it and it, it's it's become a, a classic just from that kind of spreading across the country and now you can find showings of it all the time. It's 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 a lot of fun if you get a chance to go and see it. All right. So moving on to my best theater experience. Um, This is the 50th anniversary special for Doctor Who. Um, Of course, it's it's special. You're celebrating 50 years of Doctor Who. Um, This is 2013 when it came out, so almost 10 years. We're going to be celebrating the 60th soon, which I'm excited for. But yeah, I was so excited for the 50th. Like Leading up to it, I was excited. I was just talking how I was going to go and see it. Um, I made my plans for it. Um, but yeah, this was one of those times where the, the experience itself was only available on that one day. So it was only in theaters on that one day. Um, there's only two showings. I got the earlier showing, but I got the last two tickets of that showing. Oh. In the front row. <laughs> in 3D. Um, which of course that would be bad to watch a movie in the front row in 3D, but the special itself was just so exciting because I was in the packed room with Doctor Who fans, whom I'd never seen other fans in this country before, <laughs> and so just seeing all these fans together, we were like, I'm dressed up, um, I'm there with my mom. 
Uh, it was just a fun time. We're all cheering for all the moments. Um, in fact, there was like these short skits that were presented in the film beforehand that were only available in the film itself, which was really cool to see. Um, but yeah, this was just a great time. Just sharing this one experience. I, I hope that I can have a similar experience next year when it comes out. Um, just seeing all these characters, um, the big shocks and twists and just the um, cameos that happen that you didn't, you weren't expecting to happen. It was the most insane thing to happen in Doctor Who at the time. Um, and yeah, I, of course, like watching the episodes now, it's not quite the same. Of course, because you're not in a room full of these people. But it's still fun to think back at that time. Uh, yeah, I that that's one of my best my best time seeing the film. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great when you get to be in a room with people who care about the movie. Yeah, it, it's also great when this is just like a special occasion. Yeah, where it's only being shown once. Um, so yeah, it's this is my favorite time. Doctor oh. Who, say what you want about the show, but that was that was <laughs> fun, crazy, just seeing it. <laughs> yeah. And there yeah. you have it. Those were our best and our worst experience uh, experiences in the films. Um, I'm sure there are other stories that happen here and there that you could remember, could not remember. Um, but no, this was our time. Yeah. It's great to see movies in theaters. I think it's it's important to support the theatrical experience because it's something you don't get on home, on Netflix, on your couch. Right. Like, even if you could try and replicate it with, like, a, you have a projector and you have, like, maybe you have some speakers. It's not the same as, like, a giant screen plus surround sound fully perfected. Um, system and you're in a room with people who are enjoying the same thing as you and reacting to it um, it's, it's not the same and so getting these experiences is great because like you can get popcorn <laughs> as well <laughs> I get yeah. popcorn every time I go to the movie it's like a sin <laughs> for me to not eat popcorn when I go to watch a movie it's impossible Yeah, so it, it's a it, great time I just love going it's been, you know, you're not, not being able to see much in recent years because money and stuff. But, yeah, it's still fun. Yeah, it, it's great to see movies in the theaters. And it is, it is an experience beyond just the movie itself. Um, like you said, the popcorn and the, the audience and get, getting to have this sort of community together with people there. And sometimes it doesn't work out as well. Sometimes the people you're with aren't a great audience. Um, but but when it works out, it it's magical. It is magical. So yeah, do you have anything else to say before we go? Go and see a movie at the theaters. Um, if this podcast gets out and Top Gun is still in theaters, that's a real fun one to just sit in a dark room and watch people go fast in airplanes. Yeah. So anyway, I believe that's all I have for today. So thank you guys for listening. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.